Recently, the National Collegiate Athletic Association implemented a policy requiring all incoming Division I student athletes to be screened for sickle cell trait, to show proof of prior screening, or to decline being screened by signing a release waiver. Now, since 2000, approximately 21 non-trauma-related college football deaths have occurred, and 40% of those have occurred among individuals who had sickle cell trait. And although sickle cell trait is not a disease per se, individuals who have the trait are at increased risk for sudden death or heart failure if they become overexerted or dehydrated. As a social psychologist, I started the Laboratory for the Social and Psychological Study of Sickle Cell Disease here at UMBC in 2005, and we study social attitudes and perceptions about sickle cell disease and sickle cell trait. The NCAA's policy on sickle cell trait has caused quite a debate between people who think that it will protect students on one hand and those, who, on the other hand, who think that it may lead to more discrimination. I think that those arguing both for and against the new NCAA policy are missing two very important points. So the first point is that since the 1980s, newborn screenings for genetic conditions, including sickle cell trait, have been in place in all 50 states. So the first question we must ask ourselves is why there are so many student athletes today who do not know their sickle cell trait status. A 2008 study by Patricia Cavanaugh and colleagues suggests the reason why. They found that only 37% of newborn screening programs actually inform families when a child screened positive for sickle cell trait. The public health infrastructure could do a better job figuring out how we can better educate the public about sickle cell and sickle cell trait. The second point is that the NCAA policy doesn't really address the root issue. None of the football players who have died from sickle cell related uh, conditions have died during games. These student athletes have died during practice or during off-season conditioning workouts where they did not have access to water, to appropriate water, uh, where they were dehydrated and they were physically overexerted. So perhaps the NCAA policy, if it were to develop guidelines to address these issues, there would be no need to distinguish between student athletes who have sickle cell trait and those who do not. This debate about the NCAA policy creates a unique opportunity to have a broader conversation about sickle cell disease and sickle cell trait. The conversation should, should be about increasing and enhancing public awareness and knowledge about what sickle cell trait is and other genetic uh, blood conditions. Mm -hmm.